57 years ago, I was born in Claybank. And my father, who had been in the war, and been a prisoner of war, um, had no ambitions other than to live in a house with a wife and bring up some kids. He had no car, nothing. My background, I was born just off Shields Road in Biker. Um, a typical family of that area. My dad didn't work. He supported the breweries twice a day, seven days a week. And uh, took a day off for the Queen, which lasted 28 years or something. I can't ever remember him working. He had a couple of odd jobs, but we survived on what they call govy jobs in that area. Uh, my mother, on the other hand, had two and sometimes three jobs. So she was, it was a matriarchal household. Um, and whilst my dad, you know, would give her his bit, as he called it, from the govy jobs, she actually was the one that brought in the main money. I was 29 years old and I was lying on the beach with my girlfriend. And um, we decided we wanted to start a family and do things different. So I said, well, we can't make any money in Jersey. It's been a great life being single, but let's go back to the mainland, start in business and become millionaires. Looking at my mother and the work ethic, and, and my father, the sense of humour and the fact that he was incredibly popular, I took best from both. And I didn't want to be better than those people, but I, be, I wanted to be better than that area, than where I grew up. I wanted to do more for myself. I did things that nobody in Britain ever does. My ex-wife and I, Gail and I, went around knocking on doors, asking for work. Went to the local bakery, asked for the personal manager, asked if I did any job, she said no. Went somewhere else. Said, Two days later, at 9 o'clock in the morning, the phone rang with the personnel manager from the bakery. She said, I've been thinking about you. She says, you're the first person in my 21 years in my career who's ever asked me, knocked on the door and asked me for a job. You usually have to go and look for employees. So she said, we found two jobs for you. So my wife and I, well, she wasn't my wife at the time, we started in the bakery. My job was to get the bread trays as they came out the bread bakery and put them on the vans. Um, my girlfriend's job was to get the cherries and put them on the baseball tarts as they came through the system. It was a bit monotonous, but we worked night shifts, worked all over the time, got the payroll up and managed to get a mortgage. I didn't really know what I wanted to do until I was 32 when I started a recruitment agency with a partner. She um, disappeared after 14 months to set up a sandwich franchise and I was left and the bank took a hold on my house basically I was going to lose it and the company was looking at insolvency. So I viewed it like a child views a brick wall, one brick at a time. And I sold the company 14 years later to a national organisation. Very successful. And everybody was talking about nursing homes. It was on the television. Maggie Thatcher had changed the rules. Everybody could, get, anybody could build a nursing home. Anybody could move into it if they're over 65. They could get paid £260 a week by the government. So I thought, this looks good. And so the guy I played squash with talking to him. We went down to Scarborough, bought a hotel that was advertised for sale, converted into a nursing home. I had a sold ice cream business, we started a nursing home business. I set, we separated from my partner and started building brand new nursing homes to single bedrooms, borrowing money from all sorts, all, out of every corner I could. Five years later I was six million pounds in debt by the fleet of nursing homes. I floated in the stock exchange. Five years later I sold it for 46 million pounds. My profession now is that I have left recruitment because for me, 14 years in it was, was enough. In that uh, it wasn't about people at the end of the day, it was more about bums on seats and finance and the, the large organisations were dominating the sector. So it had, the pleasure had gone out of it. So then I swapped my attention to training. A £26 million capital gains profit. I invested a lot into different businesses. Health clubs, children's day nurseries, hotels, and my business went from there on. I have 36 health clubs and uh, we're turning over 40 million pounds a year, I mean, great profits. I sold the nursery business for a huge profit and only paid 10% capital gains tax because it gets depreciated. And bought a villa in France and have a great life. And it's that easy, anybody can do it. Anybody can make 100 million pounds. It's the easiest thing in the world. A lot of people don't think they can do it. It's because they don't see themselves as an entrepreneur or in a high level job. And some people end up there because they've been in the right place at the right time, not because they've aspired to be. So I think as a nation, we have to blow our trumpets louder, if you like, so that we can show other nations what we're capable of. And I think with entrepreneurship in particular, 
because there's a very low take up of people going into business and there's still a high uh, rate of people who crash and burn. There's so many people now who are underprivileged who make the wrong decision, who I'd love to get together and say, okay, let's make the right decision. Let's see if we can change your life. You've got determination, you've got something. Let's choose you and let's move you into business. Let's make you successful. And I think people can do it. I think there are five words. There's passion, vision, energy, determination and focus. And if you don't have those things, you're not going to succeed. And if you're weak, what we try and do is, is assess where people are strong and where they're weak. So if they have an area that needs development, if they're never going to be a salesperson, we give them an acknowledgement of what sales is so that they know what to recruit to fill the gap. There's no point getting somebody and making that person rich. That's not the point. If you make somebody rich, then they're rich and they've got money and then they're up there. You've got to make them proud of themselves, believe in themselves, feel good about themselves, and they can do it. You can't teach somebody to be an entrepreneur. You can give them an awareness of what it takes. But I go back to the, what I call PR, which is the perception versus the reality. People go into business thinking, I'm good at making a widget, therefore I'll be good at running a business. Or I'm good at providing a service, therefore I'll be good at running a business. When in fact, what they need to be able to do is keep maybe five to nine hats in the air. They may never have managed staff. They may never have um, had to sell a product or a service. They may never have managed their finance or their marketing or understood any of the above. And that's where it falls down. Because in reality, running a business can detract from making the widget or giving the service. As from this moment, you've got a phenomenal opportunity. And every single one of you can have a life and have a great life and have money and have a privileged future. The only person stopping you is you. I feel as if I've cheated a lot and I'm at a stage in my life where I'm very happy with, with what I've done and I'd like to give something back. My message throughout the schools and when I've done talks for women's groups and when I won the Barclays Bank Women Entrepreneur of the Year in 2000 was to say, um, if I can do it, you can. Because I don't feel the skills I have are anything special. It's something that you hone and develop over the years. You build on them and you just make it yours doesn't mean you're any better than anybody else. You just take the bull by the horns and you run with it. Because even if you fail, you haven't failed. It's a lesson learned. And anybody can do it. It's not a fantasy. I'm not making it up. I can take anybody who wants to be there on a journey and change their whole life.